Hey friends, today is Crafted by Corey's Minis Challenge, Fall and Halloween Edition. Links to Corey's channel and the playlist will be in the description box. Let's start crafting. I have this really pretty crafter square fabric that I found last year that I never did anything with. Um, it's about 20 by 21. So I'm thinking that I want to make a little stuffed owl to go in my tear tray. I'm going to use this chipboard owl as a template. So starting on that. This is very cottage core. Grateful, thankful, gather. Leaves, the little bird, the acorns. It's all so pretty. Just beautiful fall fabric. Once I had my fabric unrolled, I folded it in half and traced out my owl so that I would have two pieces to glue together once I was finished. I added a small binder clip to keep my fabric together and then I started to cut out my owl shape with detail scissors. Once my shape was cut out, I just used my glue gun to just glue my pieces together so that I could stuff this with a little bit of polyfill. I have enough fabric left over that I want to make some more little animals with this and I think I'll just use like a simple stitch for those. But for the sake of the video, I just used the hot glue because it was quicker. And I left the bottom open, of course, so I could stuff my polyfill in. And I just used a pin to try to get my polyfill up into the area where the ears were. I didn't want to, you know, pull my seams apart since I just used hot glue. And I just tried to get this as stuffed as I possibly could, but leaving enough room so that I could seal the bottom closed. There was a small area on the top that popped open. I just added a bit more glue to that and closed that off. And at the bottom, I just went across the edges and added my hot glue to totally seal it off. And this little owl, I'm going to name her Olivia the Owl. I noticed that I cut my fabric in the wrong direction. So I'm definitely going to have to make her a twin brother Oliver with my pattern going in the correct direction. But I still think it looks cute. And I'm giving her button eyes. I think that just looks so adorable. And then just a little bit of lace for a little ribbon on the side. I was on the fence about adding a little beak. I thought maybe I can put like a tiny pine cone, but I really wasn't sure. Let me know in the comments if it looks cute like this or if I should have added a beak. Our host, Corey, she does thrift flips, hauls, trash to treasures, all on a budget. Please check out her channel. I finally found these little faux wooden apples. I've been looking for these for the past month. So happy to find these. What I want to make are four tiny candy apples and take this little tiny stem out, put in a longer bamboo skewer so that it looks like a candy apple stick. Got my garden shears out, but still no dice with this little fake stem. Two of them came right out. And the other two just kind of snapped. So it is what it is. Mixed Kelly Green and White Apple Barrel Paint for my Granny Smith Apple. Okay. 
Okay, while those dry, I think it'd be really cute to do an apple stack. So maybe I'll stack like three apples, like red, green, and then a yellow for the golden delicious. I haven't even used these ornaments yet, so that might be a really cute idea, just to stack three apples. And I already have so much of this green paint. And for my golden delicious apple, I used bright yellow, white, and then I dipped a little bit of my mixture from that Granny Smith paint into it to really make it look like the golden delicious color. And then for my large red delicious, just more of that bright red apple barrel paint for that one. And for my tiny candy apples, I just took a scrap piece of bamboo skewer and snipped off a piece that looked like it would be about the appropriate size for a mini candy apple. And I just repeated the same step for all four of them. to really give it a candy coated exterior. For two of these, I'm going to add Gloss Mod Podge as a top sealer. Now the Mod Podge is dry and they look fantastic, very glossy. For one of them, I'm going to add brown oxide so it looks like it's been dipped in chocolate. And I'm using a light mocha, bright yellow, a little bit of the brown oxide, and then a little orange to try to get the color of caramel so I can use that on two of the apples. If you're enjoying this content, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. I post videos every week. So this is as close as I could come with the paints that I had on hand to the look of melted caramel. So I just went ahead and added it halfway up on both of my green apples. I glue four tower blocks together to make a little tray for my tiny candy apples. And to simulate chopped peanuts for one of my apples, I'm using this adhesive back cork board and I'm gonna cut little small pieces and then stick them onto one of my candy apples. I found this cork mat in the Crafter Square area at Dollar Tree, and the color tone of this is similar to peanuts, so to my eye, it just makes sense to use this as faux chopped peanuts. My Granny Smith apples, I'm going to add little dots simulating sprinkles. I literally bought my son a candy apple with fall colored sprinkles from Walmart a week ago. So these will be a replica of that.
I use a box cutter to slice off the stem and leaf of my Granny Smith apple. And then I glue all my apples together in a stack with my Gorilla Wood Glue. My Granny Smith apple will receive a bamboo skewer to use as the candy apple stick since it's going on the very top. On the caramel and sprinkled area of both Granny Smith apples, I add the gloss Mod Podge so it looks really shiny. And the rest of the apple receives the matte Mod Podge so it just looks like the regular wax that's normally on apples. all of the Mod Podge is dry so now it's time to glue my stick and then apply a small lace ribbon to the very top. I did glue two tower blocks to the base of my apple stack so that it would stand up. If you can't find the wooden apples in your store, you can use pomegranates. Dollar Tree has a lot of these out now, the pomegranate picks. So what I did before I found the wooden apples was I pulled off some of the pomegranates and um, I just, I snipped this part away and I smushed the top part in so that it looked more like the top of an apple. And then I just, you can take like a piece of a bamboo skewer or a piece of a toothpick or a piece of a cherry stem. That's what I used here. This is just a piece of a cherry stem that I pushed down inside. And then I mixed together some black and red paint to get a deeper red and I made faux apples. So there's always an alternative and thank goodness that Dollar Tree has things like you know, these little foam pomegranates that you can use them to make other fruit. So that's your alternative if you want to make little tiny apples or candy apples for your tear tray. I will link the video that I made these little apples in the description box. I'm starting with this wooden heart I found in the Crafter Square area, and I want to use this as a faux sweet potato pie slice. But first I need to add a bit of spackling to the side so that the layers of the wood pressed together don't show. Now that it's all dry, I can go ahead and use my Crafter Square Orange and I'm gonna mix just a bit of brown oxide into this so that it looks, the color appears more like a baked sweet potato pie slice would look because it's not a super bright orange because of the spices and other things you add. If you can't find this wooden heart, you can always use a piece of styrofoam or the foam cardboard from Dollar Tree to make a faux pie slice. And for my lower crust, I'm going to use this cork mat and just trace out my shape onto the back and then just apply it with the adhesive. Sweet potato pie is a favorite for our family. We don't care for pumpkin pie. It's sweet potato pie all the way. So <laughs> I have to do a sweet potato pie DIY.
for the upper portion of the crust, I'm using just some burlap ribbon that I found at Dollar Tree and I snip it to size and then I fold it over and glue it so that it becomes a bit sturdier and then I apply it to my faux, faux pie slice. I repeated these same steps again so I ended up with two pieces folded over to make a full crust for this pie slice. And then here I'm just applying glue so that I can attach my second burlap piece that I made to finish off the upper portion of the crust. For my dollop of cream, I'm gonna use this oven baked clay. So once I had a nice length of clay rolled out, I just put it into a coil so it looked like some whipped cream had been sprayed and then I popped it in the oven for 15 minutes at 275 degrees so that it could fully bake and I then painted it white with apple barrel paint and then glued it to the top of my faux pie, faux pie slice. Using a wood plank from Dollar Tree, I'm going to just add lines so it looks like shiplap and I'm just going to place my ruler down um, and just use the full width of the ruler to make my lines. And I'm not going to paint it because I like the tone of the wood. It has a, a nice warmth to it. So I just go all the way down and then I use Dollar Tree stickers to apply and spell out sweet potato pie. Then using these really nice Dollar Tree stickers, they really have stepped it up this year with the craft supplies, their paper crafting, just a lot of stuff that they didn't have last year. So I just use the pie and two of the leaves to apply to this sign. And then I use some thin twine that I found at Dollar Tree near the automotive area. And I glued that around the perimeter of my sign. I wanna add this to my tear tray as well. Then I just hot glued two tower blocks to the back so that this would stand up on my tray and that was it for my sign. I love the way this turned out. I'd love to know what type of pie does your family enjoy?
For the next DIY, I wanted to make a small tier tray using this square cake pan, glass cutting board, this buffalo plaid um, paper, vinyl paper I just found at Dollar Tree, this glass vase separating my levels. This will fit right into a corner of my counter and I think um, this will give it a nice height. This vase is has a pretty nice height to it and I've never used any of the vinyl paper so I'm hoping that this works out well. It says that it's waterproof. So first I just start by adding some of this black paint into the vase and painting the inside so that I'm able to wipe it clean and not disturb the paint. And I found this black paint in the Target dollar spot. So I unrolled some of this vinyl paper and lay it inside my pan so that I can mark off where I need to cut. I would love to know if any of you have used any of this Dollar Tree vinyl and what are your thoughts on it. I don't have a cutting machine and I found several colors of this vinyl paper. So I plan on just using this for big applications like this and maybe with some of the poster signs just because I make uh, a lot of stencils myself and I use some of the ones that I find in the Crafter Square area, but I'm hoping that I get a good result from it. With my center area marked, I fold my paper in half and go ahead and cut my circle out. This is where my vase will be glued down and I need it glued down to my pan and not the vinyl. start to peel back some of the backing paper and apply this to the pan and I have just a game card from Chuck E. Cheese to kind of work the air bubbles out. With my paper down I have this buffalo plaid ribbon I found at Dollar Tree as well. And it has a larger pattern than the vinyl paper and I want to attach it around the uh, outside of my pan and I'm hoping that this Gorilla Glue will um, help it to adhere. If it doesn't, then I'll just go ahead and put the vinyl paper around it. But the pattern on this is larger and it matches the cutting board so I thought this would look nice on the outside. So I just continued to go all the way around the pan with the Gorilla Glue since hot glue really doesn't do too well on metal and it seemed to hold pretty well so I guess I'll just stick with this ribbon and it didn't do too bad. Now it's time to add my vase and I just scrape off some of the paint that um, came up around the lip edge and wipe that off and then I just applied the clear grip Gorilla Glue and I flip it upside down and press it down into my pan and then I apply more Gorilla Glue and then apply my cutting board to the very top as my topping tier. I really love this cutting board. The messaging, family is everything, is so true. I love the colors, the black and white buffalo plaid is just great for going into fall. And I think I'll get a lot of use out of this. And I, I think this really came together nicely. It's not too big, it's the perfect size for the area that I need it for. And for my final DIY of this video, I'm taking two table scatter pumpkins. I had already brushed off some of the glitter because Dollar Tree puts way too much glitter on everything. And I'm using um, lavender from Apple Barrel, Kelly Green mixed with a little white, and painting the pumpkins. And with the paint fully dry, I have buttons that I want to use as the ears. So I just take a piece of a bamboo skewer and I kind of scratch 
a little bit of an indentation into the styrofoam so that my buttons can be hot glued down into there and I have my Mickey and Minnie pumpkin. I take a little piece of bamboo skewer and insert it into the top so that I have a stem for both pumpkins and then some piece of a scrapped uh, lace that I separated from some burlap from another project and just hot glue it together and add it to the top of my lavender pumpkin so that Minnie has a bow. And I think this is a really cute idea to use um, when you're crafting with the kids. They can pick out, you know, what color they want their little pumpkin. They can pick out what buttons they would like as the ears. It's very simple, very quick, but it looks really adorable. And here's everything together on the tear tray I made. I love how everything turned out. My favorite, of course, has to be the sweet potato pie. You'll have to let me know what do you guys think of these new fall crafts that I made for you today. If you like this mini pumpkin spice latte, I'll link the video for that in the description box as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching my video. Please enjoy the playlist.